If the ex-president follows his usual strategy of delay, delay, delay to postpone his federal criminal trial in Florida, one of the people who has firsthand knowledge of Donald Trump's tactics is former Manhattan District Attorney Cy Vance, who began investigating Trump and his family company back in 2018. When Vance's office issued a subpoena for Trump's personal and corporate taxes, Trump filed suit to block it, taking it all the way to the Supreme Court twice. It took 18 months before Vance finally got the tax records. The Supreme Court ruled in his office's favor. And just over four months after that, relatively quickly, he charged the Trump Organization with running a 15 years long tax scheme. Ultimately, the investigation that Vance launched led to his successor, Alvin Bragg, securing a tax fraud conviction against the Trump Organization in criminal court. Along with a guilty plea from its former CFO, that man, Alan Weisselberg, and most significantly, as we know, a 34-count felony indictment of the ex-president just two months ago in Manhattan. That happened nearly five years after Cy Vance began his investigation. And Cy Vance, the district attorney for Manhattan from 2010 to 2022, joins me now. It's great to have you here. Thanks, Chris. Um, first, just maybe a little bit of your experience with that drawn-out litigation. Obviously, in that case, there's some interestingly novel issues, I suppose, although in the end, the Supreme Court said, no, nah, not really. <laughs> sort of is like anyone else. Um, but what do you anticipate in terms of the success of delay tactics and even sort of basic things like that? Well, our case was in a unique set of circumstances because President Trump was President Trump. Sitting president. Yes. And when you're the sitting president, I've discovered there are many guardrails in the system to protect you. You can have, as he did, your attorney general uh, oppose a subpoena in civil court. You can have your solicitor general do the same. You can have all the forces of the... Of the, the federal government. government was arguing his case. Was yeah. arguing his case, including in, in addition to his private lawyers. Right. Uh, and uh, what I would say, those guardrails uh, were frustrating, but I, I understood them, and I think they're important. Yeah. You have to protect the president from routine, or not routine, from uh, malicious yes. suits. And in our case, interestingly, given, you know, given the comments about politics being involved, the Supreme Court looked at, twice the courts ruled there was no evidence of political motivation. And I think that's probably going to find the same in everything that's on today. But it took a long time. Uh, but once we had the records uh, and once we were able to get grand juries up and running because they were stopped under COVID, uh, it was a relatively quick process to present the indictment for tax evidence. So my my sense is we were in somewhat unique and different circumstances than there are today. Right. He no longer has that protection. He doesn't have the Department of but Justice. But I think, I think the game plan uh, for the defense is typically benefited by delay. I mean, if your client is not in court, he can't go to jail. So you... And if he's not in, if he's not in, if he's not sitting in Rikers, then you want to delay as long as possible because he's free every day that he's not being uh, But crime. in seriousness, uh, I think the judges, as your earlier uh, panelists suggest, I think the judges will all try to move these cases as quickly as they can. There are three different con you know, parallel running train tracks, civil uh, in uh, the AG's office in New York, criminal now in the Manhattan DA's office in a new criminal case. In Florida. And there may be more trains there may be, added there may be on, more, on tracks. more tracks. Well, you just mentioned Letitia James, who, of course, is the attorney general uh, of the state of New York. And she was speaking with my friend and colleague Alex Wagner yesterday. And she talked about the sort of how this is going to work out jurisdictionally. And here's what she had to say. Take a listen. The special counsel has asked for a speedy trial for this. Is, is this going to intersect with your case at all? How is everybody going to manage the calendar here? So in all likelihood, I believe that my case, as well as DA Bragg um, and um, the Georgia case um, will unfortunately have to be adjourned pending the outcome of the federal case. Um, so it all depends upon uh, the scheduling of this particular case. I, I didn't, that, that was news to me. And again, I, this is not my area of expertise. What do you think about that? Well, it was news to me as a, uh, as a set rule. Um, I think the attorney general may be right in what ultimately transpires in terms of the schedules. As we were talking about, a civil case would ordinarily be trumped in terms of next Priority. stage to a criminal case. Uh, but having filed the Manhattan case first, even though it's only a matter of a month or two before the case in Florida, the Manhattan judge, uh, Lon Marchand, excellent, serious, he's going to want his case to move. And that's what all judges want. And so presumably will the Florida judge. 
I think there will probably be communications amongst and between the judges, as well as probably amongst and between the attorneys representing the parties. Uh, but as a general proposition, I think uh, the odds are good that Florida will go first. You do? I do. I, I, I do. And, and you think that's because of a sort of, again, there's not like some guidelines here. There's no like l black letter no rule. regulation or rule, right? It's just that, do you think the judges get on the phone with each other? Well, I would, I mean, I, I would hope so. <laughs> I mean, so. there's two judges. They got two different, they got two different cases with the most, you know, strange and famous defendant in, you know, the country. The, you have two different judicial systems. Right. Entirely separate and with their own statutory authority. Yeah. So I would assume that representatives of the New York State Court and the federal court would have conversations, nothing improper about that, no, about scheduling. No, yeah. And there would be input, no doubt, from the parties. Yeah. Uh, so I think this will probably be a civil, and that I mean courteous right, process. Yes, right. Uh, Judge Bershon is not going to want to be treated as a second-class citizen and shouldn't be. Right. Uh, nor should Judge Bershon not recognize that the stakes in the Florida case are about as high as they get. Uh, and that we all should want that case to move appropriately and, and you know and fairly. So I think it's a little bit up in the air, but I'd give I'd give the edge to the federal case.